Hey everybody, welcome back to another Daily Creative Challenge. I'm Jesus Ramirez. This is the Daily Creative Challenge number nine. And unfortunately, this is going to be our last challenge together. So I'm gonna miss you guys. But we're gonna end it with a bang and we're going to work on a project that involves text. We're going to work on a project that shows you how to create the pop-out text effect. So we're gonna have a text layer and one of the, and we're gonna place an image over that text and one of the subjects of the photo is gonna be popping out right out of the text. Um, before we get started, I'm just gonna make sure that I have the chat enabled so that I can see what challenge you guys number are nine um, talking and about. And there we go, we got the um, voice in there again but no worries um hi everybody i see uh samuel i see kata as usual hey adobe live uh ronnie carrie larry um a whole bunch of people austin wendy thank you so much for being with me today um i'm super excited to be here for the last day but i hope to be back again very soon um before we get started i just want to mention that you can download today's template that we're going to use for our project from the behance.net slash daily creative challenge uh, page. And you can scroll down to the very, very bottom and you can download the template for the movie title. Let's title movie title. And, and like I said, it's gonna be a project where we're gonna have a piece of text and we're gonna place an image on top of that. And the subject is gonna pop out right out of, the, uh, out of the image. So download that template. Also, while you're here, if you haven't already, make sure that you click on the join the conversation button or you click on the join us on Discord button or go on to that URL so you can join us on Discord. This is what the Discord page looks like. And you can see that people have been submitting um, pieces to the design feedback channel. And we did the face swap um, effect yesterday. And you can see that some people have been working on really cool face swaps. So this is actually a really good one. I really like it. We have a little rascals ones in there. There's a whole bunch of really cool looking face swaps and not just face swaps, we've been working on movie posters, album covers, comic book to te uh, photo to comic book effect, um, a whole bunch of other really, really cool projects. So I highly recommend going back and watching the old streams that have been uh, put up or recorded and they're, they're now up on the Adobe Creative Cloud channel and on Behance.net and watch the old ones, follow along with me and still submit to the design feedback channel. You can ask a question, you can check out the tips and tricks page. I'm there, the mentors are there and the Adobe team is there and other users just like you are also there commenting, giving advice and helping everybody out. So I look forward to seeing you all on Discord. So once again, for today's challenge, um, you will need to download the get the template um, folder so you can follow along and then you can find your own image and then use whatever uh, text you like for the actual challenge but just so that you understand the process and how all this works you can follow along with me using that template file <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is go into Photoshop and this is the file that you should have downloaded from the Behance page and it contains two layers. We have a layer that's a text layer and it just simply reads AFC. And that's for Adobe Football Club. Club. I don't know if you know this, but Adobe has a soccer team. No, actually I wish they did, they really don't. But if they did, I can guarantee you that uh, Paco and Gus who are in the chat probably um, would be on the team. I picture Paco as a speedy forward and I picture Gus as a midfielder controlling the entire game. So let me know in the chat if I'm right guys, if you guys are on the chat. <laughs> but anyway, um, what I'm gonna do in this project is place this image inside of that text layer and then we're gonna have the soccer player popping right out of the image. And it's a very simple effect to achieve. The only thing that you have to do is think, of, think about um, the project as layers. Um, because that will help you understand how you can use mask and multiple layers of the same image to create that popping out effect. So what you need to do first is with the image that you bring in, and by the way, if you don't know how to bring in an image, all you need to do is go into file, um, place embedded, and then bring an image in. I already have an image in this starter file, so I don't have to worry about that. And I have a text layer. And you can create a text layer just by clicking on the type tool and typing something in. 
and then you have the um, character panel that you can, when you click on, on a text layer, you can just make adjustments by clicking on the character panel, which is this one here, and then adjusting the font and size and all that good stuff. So I'm just gonna work with what I already have there, which is um, the font called Proxima Nova, which is one of the fonts found on fonts.adobe.com, and I'm using the black weight, the thickest weight for this. But you can use whatever font you like, whatever weight, it's totally up to you. This is just what I have as a starter file. And we have this image of a soccer player, of course. And to put an image inside of text is actually really, really simple. All you need to do is press Control, Alt, and the letter G. Control, Alt, and the letter G. That's Command, Option, and the Mac. And you create what's known as a clipping mask. A clipping mask simply means that uh, this layer here, with the down pointing arrow, is clipped to the layer below. And what that means is that the layer below controls the, the visibility of the layer on top. So whatever we have active pi pixels, visible pixels on the bottom layer, that's where the pixels on the layer on top will show. So in this case, since the pixels are just the text layer, with the clipping mask, we see the image inside of the text and I can move it around with the move tool. So I can place my soccer player accordingly. So I'm gonna place him right about here so that the ball is right on the letter. Uh, F, right in the center. But notice now that we have a problem. We have the image that doesn't cover the entire part of the letter C. We can easily fix that just by duplicating the layer. And also we're having the problem on this side. Let me just move that, I accidentally moved it. And let me place it back. So now we need to fix this right side. And all that we need to do is just simply press Control J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate the layer. Then I can press Control T, Command T to transform and right click and select flip horizontal and I can just place this part right over here on this side, something like that. And then I can use the clipping mask again, control alt G, command option G on the Mac, and I can overlap them to kind of hide that seam. And it looks like it's looking pretty good. I can use a layer mask if I need to, if there's a seam I need to hide or any repeating patterns, you can simply create a layer mask and then paint with black on those areas. So let me just do it just, even though I don't really need to, I'll do it just to show you. You can select the brush tool and just paint with black. See how I'm painting with black and hiding those pixels? That's what I'm talking about. And you can just bring it in and then um, hide that seam. In this case, it's not necessary. I'm actually repeating the pixels on this side and it doesn't look very good. So I'm going to undo that. But that option is there available for you in case your image requires it. So remember, you can create a layer mask and paint with black to hide pixels that create a seam. So what we're gonna do now is work on the actual effect. We're gonna make it seem as if the soccer player is popping out of the text layer. And what you need to do is simply select that text, uh, that um, image and press Control J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate it and drag it to the very, very top. When I did that, I broke the clipping mask for this second layer. All you need to do is once again, press Control Alt G, uh, Control Alt G, Command Option G on the Mac to clip that to the layer below and we have that layer back in there. Now with this layer, what we're going to do is just selectively mask the soccer player so that he shows in areas that we want him to show. And the first thing that I need to do is make a selection around the soccer player. And if you remember way, way back then on the very first challenge, I showed you how to use the quick selection tool, which allows you to click and drag to make a selection around your subject. You want to select the main subject of the image just by clicking and dragging on him. If you're in Photoshop CC, all you need to do is click on select subject. Adobe Sensei, which is Adobe's artificial intelligence, will attempt to make a selection around the main subject of the image. And it did a pretty good job here. It's not perfect, but I can fine tune the selection by holding Alt, clicking and dragging to subtract from that selection. And if I deselect something that I didn't want to deselect like I did there, I can click and drag to make the selection again. So I'm just selecting pixels that I want to keep. Um, this looks like a good selection for now. We can always fine tune it. So what I'm going to do is just create a layer mask and I'm going to click on this icon here to create a layer mask. So now our soccer player is popping right out of the text. So it already, I've already created the effect that I'm going for. At this point, all we need to do is fine tune the image. So I'm gonna put everything into a group. 
so that I can control it individually uh, as a single layer basically and I can just move it around. So with the top layer selected, I'm going to hold shift, click at the bottom most layer and then press control G, command G on the Mac to put all those layers into a group and I can just now move the entire thing as a single unit. And I can just place it accordingly on my canvas. I can create a solid color fill layer and I'll just make it gray for now and I'll place it right below everything. So that's my text. I can enable the um, text layer again. And if I need to, I can double click on the text layer and I can give the text a bevel, uh, shadows, and do all that fun stuff that we learned in the uh, first movie title poster tutorial where we created a, a movie title using a whole bunch of layer styles. So I'm not gonna go into that now. You can go back into that video and watch how we created layer styles to create a 3D text effect and make the text look much, much more interesting. For this case, we don't have time for that, so I'm just gonna press OK with just those adjustments so we have a bevel and, and a shadow. And that's all inside of this group and I can move it around accordingly and I can change the color of my background to something that looks a little more pleasing. So it's really up to you um, what colors you use on your background. The important thing to do at this point is to simply fine tune the mask. If I zoom in, you'll notice that the mask is not perfect. So areas like under his arm, I could fix. And all I need to do is just paint with black to hide pixels so the pixels underneath his arm I'm going to hide and I don't really select the shoulder here so I can paint with white so I'll set my foreground color to white and I'll paint with white on that layer mask to reveal those pixels and I can just go around and look at the entire image and see where I need to hide pixels so maybe in between his arm here again and obviously I'm going fairly quickly here in your Projects take a little more time fine-tuning the selections so or the layer mass rather and That's looking pretty good Like I said what you need to do in your project is fine-tuning we can spend the whole another hour fine-tuning the Selection here, but that's all we really need to do um, Let me know in the comments if this is something that you enjoy and start thinking about pictures that you want to use for your projects we, you can use pictures of anything. They could be animals, they could be buildings, anything you want. The important thing is that you will need to create just at least one layer and the second layer containing the object that's going to pop out of the text and you're going to use a layer mask to, um, to contain that, that, layer, that subject and it, make, it makes it seem like it's popping out. And actually what I'm looking at now is, I, of course I need to fine tune the a flag a whole lot more but one thing that I'm just noticing that I'm that I do want to add is look for little details like um, like this one here the flagpole this one I can just paint that in just to make it a little more realistic and by the way in Photoshop if you click on a, on a point and you hold shift and click on another point Photoshop will draw a straight line between those, those two points so that's what I did here I click on this point and you know what before I do that I'm going to increase the hardness so that the edges are not so soft. So I'm gonna click on a point, hold shift, and click on another point, and Photoshop will draw a line in between those, those two points. So now I have my flagpole. So those are the little details that you need to watch out for um, when you're working in Photoshop. And like I said, I know I missed a whole bunch of other things here. Um, one thing that you can do is with the layer mask selected, you can click on selected mask and you can just smooth the selection so that it's not so jagged. See that? See how the flag looks really jagged? You can smooth that, maybe increase the contrast a little bit just to create sharper edges, and that just creates a much nicer edge on the layer mask. And just keep coming in here and start painting with black, and that was white, <laughs> start painting with black on areas that have, you know, fringing like that. Fringing is that outline that appears on edges, the biggest takeaway I would say in this stream is that layer masks are easy to create, but the problem comes into play when you're fine tuning the image. So creating a good layer mask is actually quite easy, 
but fine tuning it is what really, really takes a long time. So spend most of the time fine tuning the image. I would say just create a very rough layer mask to, be, to begin with. Don't spend a lot of time fine, uh, fine tuning it until you're 100% sure you're going to keep that layer mask because a lot of times you may spend a lot of time fine tuning a layer mask and then you realize that you didn't need to spend all that much time because you know you have a background actually that um, covers your mistakes or you don't you move decide to move the subject so a layer mask no longer needs work in one area it needs work in another so create a very rough layer mask like i did here and then when you're 100 percent sure that that's the spot where you're going to keep your main subject that's when you zoom in and you start looking at those tiny little details to improve it but i wouldn't worry about the details too a little later on just because you can waste a whole lot of time creating layer masks and it's not going to be a good thing um, what i'm going to do now is show you how to export this image and how we can save it into behance using the appropriate keyword so i'm going to go into file and export export as and i'm just going to export it and you know what i'll export it as a jpeg just so i can have a smaller file it uploads a little bit faster and i'll just call it daily challenge number nine that's fine and that is saved let me bring up um behance here it is what you need to do is take note of the ps daily challenge keyword ps in capital letters daily challenge in lowercase letters and what you need to do is just copy it or remember it when you create a project, you need to upload your file, of course. And this is going to show you the project, the final project. You click on continue and give your project a title. I'll just call it AFC for Adobe Football Club. And you can adjust the preview window here if you like. In this case, I think it looks better like this. So I'll leave it zoomed out. Then I'll click on crop and continue. And under discoverability, you can just paste the keyword on there, PS, capital letters, lowercase, daily challenge, tap the comma key to commit that keyword, and then you can save it or publish it. And the reason that you want to use that particular keyword is so that when we search for it, we can see all the amazing work that you've done. And why don't we take a look at a few of the work that you guys have done. So these are some really cool movie posters they, that uh, were created. This used the double exposure effect. Again, you can go back and watch the replays on all of these if you wanna learn how to create those effects. This is a really good one. I love how they included the text here at the bottom, it's Sony Pictures. <laughs> so maybe this is a, like a superhero movie, I don't know, but it looks really, really cool. So good job on this one. I love the text. I think it looks fantastic. Um, let me see what else we have here. We have album album covers, which were, I believe that was day number two or three. And somebody let me know in the chat. I already forget what um, day this was, but it looks really, really cool. Really like this effect. I like the colors. And they also included the actual album, which was not part of, this, of the uh, challenge, but I really like it how this person uh, went that extra step and added that album. Um, let's see what else we have. I want to see a comic book effect. So we did a, a photo from a comic uh, comic book effect from a photo. This one looks really, really cool. I love the details on, uh, on the um, feathers here. It looks fantastic. The reflection looks great. This is a great photo and it's just a really cool effect. So it's actually really simple to do. All you need to do is just apply a couple filters. Again, you can go back and watch the replays on that. We also have, oh man, I wish that we had time to go through all of them. There's a lot of good work here. I've seen this one on the Daily Challenge um, Discord tab. So under Design Feedback, people are submitting their images, as you can see there. And I saw this one on there, and I think it's a great double exposure effect. It looks fantastic. Great colors, great font. It just looks great. And if I'm not mistaken, they also followed the stream on creating the movie poster title where we use layer styles to create that 3d effect so just it's a great poster so very very good job on this one uh it looks like uh, michelle moore created this one fantastic so really really good job on this one really really like it what do you guys think <laughs> i'm just reading the chat and you want to learn somebody wants to learn cartoon animation me too <laughs> um but yeah a whole bunch of great work 
So I would recommend you guys coming in here and just checking out the PS Daily Creative Challenge tag so you can get some inspirations and then follow along with the videos to create your work. Also, right now, the default sorting is most appreciated. I'm just gonna select most recent just to see what the most recent work is. And we have some face swaps, which were pretty fun. I saw this one on the Discord page, which I thought looked great. So there's a lot of good work being created here and thank you so much for following along with me. It's, it's really fun to see the stuff that you guys come up with from the challenges that I present to you guys. So it's really, really, um, first of all, inspiring to see the work that is being created and how much time you guys dedicate to it and how you guys take the feedback that we give you on Discord and then improve on your project. So it's super, super cool, cool to see. And as you guys know, I'm a fan of cats, so I always have to click on a cat. If I see a cat, I'll click on it. This is a really cool effect with the uh, cartoon, um, the photo to a photo to a comic book effect, and album cover, and double exposure movie posters. So really, really uh, good work, you guys. So I really, really appreciate it. It's almost time for me to say goodbye. Once again, I just wanna say thank you for everyone who has been with me for the past two weeks. It's been really fun. It was great seeing a lot of familiar names on the chat supporting me and supporting the live streams. It's, it's really cool of you guys, so thank you so much. Um, let me just quickly look at the chat and see if there's anything. Oh, somebody said that cap is mine. I'm guessing they're talking about Captain America. Let me see if I can see it. Uh, Captain America. Oh, this one. I'm guessing. I'm guessing this is you, Daniel. I don't know, but <laughs> there is a Captain America one in here. So yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much, so much for being with me. I really, really appreciate your support. Don't forget to stick around. There's gonna be a whole bunch more um, live streams today from uh, the 99U conference, and we have some coming right up. So. Just wait a few moments and there'll be another great streamer showing you a bunch of cool stuff. I hope to be back again with you guys soon. Um, thank you so much. If you wanna connect with me, don't forget to um, add me on Behance. You can go to my Behance profile and just click on the follow button wherever it is. This is edit your profile since this is my profile. So I think the follow button's here somewhere. It might be there, I don't know. The point is click on the follow button on Behance. I look forward to being with you guys again very, very soon. Thank you so much and I really, really appreciate your support. Talk to you guys re really, really soon. Bye.